Hello, welcome to Behind the Lens. Hi, Peter. So, Stuart Taylor, tell me, who is Stuart Taylor? Well, um, I'm a photographer. I've uh, been a semi-professional photographer for many, many years. I'm now concentrating on my photography full-time. I've been uh, living in Malaysia for almost 25 years, so I regard myself as almost Malaysian. Almost. Almost, yeah. So you eat sambal more than your wife? Oh, yes, yes. And your, your wife's Malaysian too, right? Yes. 25 years, that's a long time. Yeah. And my home is obviously Scotland. The, Which part of Scotland? Um, Eastern Scotland, Midlands, uh, just north of Edinburgh. And later you show me the kilt pattern that you carry around. Yes, in fact, I've got my full gear next door, which I only wear on special occasions. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll have that chance to see it a little bit later. But <laughs> tell me, during that 25 years as a photographer, uh, what did you shoot and how, where did you start? Well, I started a long, long time ago. I guess it goes back to the days where my great auntie passed me a camera, which was a box brownie. You know, you, you're probably far too young to remember box brownies, but... I know what box brownies are, but, you know, they're, they're probably before my time as well. I guess that kind of kicked off my interest in photography and uh, spent many years, early days, fiddling around and playing around with film cameras and got very serious about it for many many years and then obviously once the digital age or digital cameras came out um, that really brought my enthusiasm up to a new level because at that point I felt I was much more in control of the whole process. Uh, before it was always a case of um, you know shooting off a few rolls of film, handing it in and then waiting usually an agonizing one week or something till you got your film processed and returned to you and then you looked at the results and of course it would, if it was bad you blamed the printing company <laughs> <laughs> so it was not much better i thought moving into the digital age where you were in, in control of the whole process right but did you start up as a landscape nature photographer or did you try everything I've i guess i've tried a bit of everything but um you're right in that my focus has really been around, I would guess you would say, landscape style photography, although I've delved into other genres such as journalism, travel, uh, documentary style photography. And, um, but I guess overall you could probably classify it as landscape, albeit that landscape is a very broad term. Right, and um, I, I would suppose that you, know, you stuck around landscape photography or, or nature photography uh, for any particular reason why? Well, I, I guess... What I guess, inspired you? Well, again, that probably comes back to my background. I mean, being born and brought up in such a beautiful country as Scotland, uh, I was always exposed to um, wonderful scenery when the weather was good. <laughs> uh, did a lot of exploration all over the country and uh, there's some magnificent um, countryside there. and, and, and I guess my interest in landscape photography came about by me trying to capture some of that beauty and, uh, and, and show other people it. And obviously when I started travelling overseas, that expanded even further. You've been to every part of the world. Oh, I wouldn't say that. No, I've, I've still got many, many places to visit. But, but um, tell, tell me a little bit about your travels. Where have you been? Well, I mean, for the first... 20 odd years of my life I was in the UK and then was very lucky in, um, back in 1984 to travel and move out to Singapore. So that was my first introduction to the Far East and, and essentially really been out in the Far East region since about 1984. Um, spent most of my time out here based in either Singapore or Malaysia. Um, apart from a short one year time I spent overseas in Houston in the United States and also four years I spent in the Middle East based out of Dubai. How often do you travel these days? I'm traveling probably about once once a month at least. Um, having got a dedicated time now to focus on my photography and my travel, um, certainly since this year we've, I've been doing quite a number of trips. I've already done a trip to Bali, uh, I've done a trip just recently to Cambodia, I returned to Cambodia, which I hadn't been back to for about five or six years, so it was really nice to be back there. 
and um, I've got a big trip coming up in a number of two or three weeks now. I'm off to a new country I've never been to before and I'm quite excited about that. I'm going off to Nepal Wow! and doing a trek halfway up towards the Everest base camp. Uh, not all the way but uh, halfway which I think it's, is far it's enough. Good training for the next real trip up all the way? Well. I'm sure, and I've been told by many people that have been there, once you've been there, you will want to return. And I'm quite sure from uh, some of the photographs and video that I've seen from that area, it will be quite spectacular. So uh, I'm getting myself prepared, uh, both camera-wise and physically, <laughs> to actually make that trip. Tell me, tell me some of the more interesting places you've been, the more memorable ones. I would say, in, well, around Asia, which I would say it's probably one of the most interesting areas I've travelled to uh, in many of the different countries here and photographed. It's just fascinating. Um, I love Indonesia. I think Indonesia has got so many things to offer. Uh, Bali I love. Uh, fantastic scenery, great culture, wonderful old temples and heritage to understand and photograph. And as I mentioned just a short moment ago, I returned to Cambodia. That's again one of my very favourite spots, and I think it's it's wonderful to go into a country that's um, relatively untouched at the moment. So it's a great opportunity to get in there and see some of those fantastic uh, uh, ancient monuments uh, in their relatively native state before I hate to say it get ruined by tourism. <laughs> <laughs> So your advice is go as soon as you can? Yes, I think it's probably a little bit too late. In fact, this recent trip, although I visited quite a number of the more, shall I say, touristy temples that I've visited before, um, again, it's quite busy there, but you can still um, get good opportunities for photography there. But this time I specifically went out with the purpose of traveling to some of the more remote temples in the far north of Cambodia. Uh, and that certainly was very, very uh, worthwhile and I've got some tremendous photographs from, from those temples and um, you really feel like a, a first time explorer in this, these type of areas because you're the only one there as you uh, make your way through these tumble down old uh, buildings, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm.